I'm just getting started with Pipe Dream and everything's really progressed. How are you going about building out this system? So I think I, I think I kind of jumped into it with the hyper logistics, but what exactly are you building to do hyper logistics? Like just because not everybody's aware. So how are you going to satisfy hyper logistics? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the goal of hyper logistics is, is you just need a really frictionless, really fast, where's the thing stored to into someone's home. And we initially thought, okay, that's probably going to be drones. And my, my co-founder, Drew, awesome dude, s- super smart. He has his master's in aerospace, particularly unmanned systems. And we, we had done a drone project before, but we realized is that there are some speed and usability problems with that as the only solution as a daily driver, so to speak, to hyper logistics and realize that really for this to work, you need dedicated city channels for really fast ground transportation, just because of of energy efficiencies and and, and top speed potentials. And and so we were thinking of this idea of like these covered channels in a city and then realized even with today's technology, it made sense to instead of having those above ground to put those underground. And then, you know, we also took a little bit of a bet that there'd be some emergent tunnel technologies that would make things, putting things in the ground an order of magnitude cheaper. And uh, just this week, that's come true. We found a great partner. I uh, can't talk about them, but we have uh, reduced our construction costs by 90%. Nice. But the goal here is, is build these dedicated city channels for really fast frictionless underground delivery, and then eventually connect businesses and homes. So when you need an apple from the grocery store, the apple takes, or the grocery store takes the apple, puts it in something similar to those bank kiosks with with the tubes it goes underground at 200 miles an hour right into your kitchen out from under the ground and then you grab your apple <laughs> so when you say construction costs and and it's and it's you reduce it by 90 percent, are you constructing like pipes and building the underground yourself or are you contracting that out and like is, is that what your your new partnership is and like are you mainly focusing on the tunnels and the machinery that you're building like within the tunnels the pods or what what would you co- even call those yeah, yeah, we call them pods. And then there's there's a couple other systems in there. But yeah, the, the goal of this is to make this work because it's a high infrastructure cost. The only way this works is if you can keep the infrastructure cost as low as possible and make it as easy to install as possible. And I think that's why cars beat trains because trains are great, but they need really expensive, dedicated infrastructure. Whereas cars mm-hmm. just really just need a flat surface. So the goal is, you, you know, you need to keep the infrastructure cost really low so that you can put that in place and then scale the um, more expensive part per unit cost as the as the network scales. So let's see. I don't think I have a prototype. I can grab one at the end. I'll, yeah, I'll send mean, you, you a picture. If you want to take time to, to do it, uh, that's totally fine. Hey, you can send me a photo too. Yeah, yeah I can send you a photo. Mm-hmm. And so the pods themselves are, uh, imagine an electric car, but as a cylinder. So it has three wheels in a triangle. And then that's what's propelling it through ordinary PVC Three pipe. wheels and a triangle? Why, why yeah. was, so is the triangle for aerodynamics within the pipe? How did you come to that design? Yeah, yeah. So it, it gives you maximum stability with the least amount of wheels. So yeah, we, we thought about maybe doing uh, uh, two wheels in line with each other, but uh, not, not enough horizontal stability. Oh, okay. So triangle and then is the point forward? And then it kind of like bumps in because I remember, does it bump into other things when it's within the pipes? I kind of want to yeah. get into the details of like how it works in the pipes. Like, cause I, I'm curious, I, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, they, they run in trains. So you have, we, we have all the pods that are holding the packages and, and those can go in slower speeds. We're, we're targeting like 30, 40 miles an hour, but then in the high speed channels, we actually have other pods that those are the, the power to the system. So they don't have any packages inside of them. Their whole goal is to push a train of pods as fast as possible. So they do link in the high speed channels. And then the pods uh, themselves, you know, you think of this as like a highway and an off ramp situation where on the highway, they're linked with the, with the mules pushing a group of them. And then the pods self route out uh, when they need to. Okay. So are you going to first build like a circle around a city, essentially like a ring around a city, and then you can do the delivery with drones for the last mile? That's 100% uh, it, yeah. Yeah. Imagine a subway system for packages. Okay, okay. So 
Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I really like that that design because you you don't want to compete with the drones, right? No. Not at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, drones are going to own the next decade. They're amazing technology, and the FAA hopefully starts being more relaxed this year. Seems like they are, so hopefully we'll get drones uh, ASAP. Yeah. So how, how long did it take you to come up with the circle around the city kind of idea versus versus other ideas? Like, what, what other ideas were you toying with? Uh, yeah, it, it took us a little bit. You know, we were kind of resolute in the fact that uh, if you're going to build a new city, you want to build it with this like al- alternate utility, essentially. And, and we were pretty resolute in that, but most deliveries happen in cities that are already built. So what can what can you do with anything? Can you put in that would help make city logistics more efficient for a cost that is reasonable for a city? Like what's the, the smallest amount of pipe you can put in that can have the highest impact? And so that's, yeah, that's when we devised, uh, we call it the portal system. Internally, we call it the loop, but then we realized uh, Elon already stole that awesome name. He, he's coined the loop for like hyperloops around cities? Yeah, for Boring Company. It's a killer oh, yeah. name. I mean, all, hats off to Elon. Uh-huh. It's the best thing to call it. We still call it that internally, but <laughs> the goal of the portal system is if you are a Chinese restaurant and you are, you know, 700 feet from one of uh, our our portals, you take all your orders for the next 10 minutes, you put them all in that portal, they get self-routed to the neighborhood that they're going. And then yeah, the the drones or the sidewalk robots handle the last mile from there. Do you eventually want to do last mile? Or like, are you just going to let the drones continue taking care of that? Yeah, I, I think where it makes sense. I mean, I think we start with this system, and then we'll have the math and the data to know where a direct connection makes the most sense. And I I think the direct connection makes the most sense on the entry point to the system. So when you have these businesses who are doing high volume deliveries, that's where you save the most in a frictionless connection. And then I I think for the last mile, I think it's going to be up to the math. But I I think intuitively, you know, you you build new infrastructure with this in place, but maybe not to every home in um, old buildings. So we'll, okay. we'll have to see what the math says. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love this idea and I love the name. Um, 